Everybody, this is James from 40 Camera Hours, and I keep screwing up your name, so I'm just gonna say the narrative guys and let you guys introduce yourself. Because I've asked them like five times, and I keep screwing it up. Well, I've met so many wonderful people here, yeah. you know, and I can't keep everybody's name straight. We need like, I am. Yeah. So and so. So this is the narrative, guys, and we're just getting ready to do a Kill Team Cocktail Hour. And uh, this is amazing what you guys are doing. Because I'm looking at all these people, and there's already fighting. I, I just walked, there's already fighting. And oh. we are all over here having a great time. Yeah. So please, by all means, explain yourselves, what you guys do, and, and everything about it. Awesome. All right, so uh, I'm Glenn. This is Dan. So we uh, started the narrative, guys, a couple years back because we have a love for fun 40K gaming. And uh, I think our real goal here at the LVO this year is to bring fun to big public scale events and and really just a belief that 40k is the type of thing you play with your buddies over beer and dice in your garage but you can now do it in a very very big place instead yeah so for us narrative revolves around how getting a really good spotlight for your models all of us have had that really cool thing happen where our veteran scout sergeant mm -hmm. kills the chaos sorcerer with one Hail Mary Bolter shot those from the, out of nowhere. Those are the best, the best, best games. Okay, that is what our narrative is all about. That's what narrative gaming is all about. Okay. Setting the stage for those events. Yeah. And so how do you guys do that? So the first thing we do is we focus on terrain. We want a really, really, we want your great models to look as good on the terrain as they do in those pictures or in the book. Okay. And yeah. that's kind of what we're And you doing. guys have succeeded. I have all the video about that, so we'll cut that in right well, here just a segue. But yeah, it is yeah. amazing. Thank you so much. I mean, the terrain is it. And then the other big, big factor is we look towards players forming teams with what we call faction purity. We're trying to get all the Dark Angels playing with all the Dark Angels. We're trying to get all the Chaos Guys playing with the Chaos Guys. Letting the teams self-establish and identify helps them bring that narrative vibe to the to the to the force yeah you know those pictures that you see in all the GW magazines that inspired us to get into this game those are always that set piece beauty we could achieve that all it takes is a little bit of player cooperation yeah and we've had no problem because we reach out and basically our jobs is just to get the players involved with each other yeah if we if we give a handshake they do the rest it's amazing yeah. And so the way this credit works is they ask us to give out uh, sorry uh, we're having it's a loud we're having <laughs> to give out uh, a uh, battle list, you guys, beforehand, yeah. Yeah. and I'm pretty sure that you guys went over those and went, eh, this one's kind of like a Death Star unit, maybe you should, you know, I, I, I got it, I assume that, because I he, sent the most yeah. fluffiest yeah. Dark keep Angel list and, I could. Keep it fun and friendly, we're looking for, for a lot of character. We, If your Warlord has a name, that's much more fun than a Death Star. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. We'd rather see, we'd rather see those those Death Stars use, or sorry, we'd, we don't want to see five Dantes on a table, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, we want to see, yeah, yeah we want to see one right. Dante on the table and let Dante be his cool self, you know? But those those custom name characters and the love that people put into their armies, it goes without saying, it just shows how dedicated the players are to what we do. Okay, yeah. well, so without giving too much away, because we're about to play, how do you kind of spin the game? I know, I know you guys, I've been watching you guys over here trying to get, a, waiting for you guys to get a break to get an interview, and you guys are over here fast and furious, and you're talking, and you're doing stuff. And so obviously you've got a few tricks up your sleeves, and which yeah. is what we want. I mean, we, we, yeah. we're excited you're gonna do that. Absolutely. Without giving too much away, how are you guys gonna generate that game or steer the game towards not being competitive, but like, hey, you know, I want, how are you gonna make it so that I wanna charge my sergeant into a Carnifex? Yeah, right. you know. So now that we have those teams that kind of make sense, mm -hmm. you have a really good set stage. Okay. Now it's just, our job is to do all those things that we need to, that you need us to do to give you that moment. Okay. okay. Right. So we've set a really good story. We set at teams against each other. We give you a good stage, and then and we give you just enough information and setting so that you can organically make those magic happen in the game. Okay. So one thing that is uh, very different from your average 40k game, we have game mastered tables. Dan, myself, Ian, and Phil are all actually taking individual narrative tracks, and we're your guide to the narrative. Yeah. So, for instance, Yenaid Ascendant and the Emperor, the Hammer of the Emperor, are playing here on these tables. Mm -hmm. It's my job to basically work them into the story, provide feedback, and uh, what, what their commanders are doing above, and then take what they do on the table and keep forming the story. Yeah. Let their actions guide See, what happens next. Almost like a dungeon master. Exactly. 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 It's a it's a 40k theme that actually was dates back to going a rogue trader, but has long kind of fallen out of favor because, well, let's be frank, all of us want to shoot dudes and, play, and roll dice. Nobody wants to sit on the sidelines and help that. 
Yeah. But in so in a large game, in a lot of player, in a multiplayer game, so we have about three. Our perfect game is a three on three game okay. on a a eight by six board. Yeah, I noticed there there are larger tables, which I'm so, excited about. Yeah. And the and the reason for that is that gives you that room to maneuver. It gives you that place to that space to play and that place to where lots of little fights. Yeah. Now, as a game master, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to give you enough mission and prep that gets the whole board used. So we have okay. lots of those little fights. Not the APOC gun line, but more, or there's there's two tax squads over here fighting a Carniflex. There's these guys over here are trying, trying to hold the wall against a whole bunch of Griblies. Those fights become interesting. And it's our job to set up the mission to do those. Yeah. Awesome. I am so excited to look forward to this. And I mean, your train is fantastic. In fact, the, the Ready you. Player One board, I can't say enough about it. I've been telling everybody, <laughs> you need to go see the Ready Player One board. You need to see the Ready Player One board. The Thank fact, you for getting Ready Player One. That's yeah, awesome. The fact that you picked right up on that makes you clearly one of our people. No, yeah, you know? and, and that you've got a gene stealer called Limousine over there. So, oh, yeah. I mean, that's how old school some of us are. Yeah, exactly. So, and I mean, that's where one of the things that we like to remind people of, I mean, yes, there are multiplayer games and there are big boards, but it's not Apocalypse. If we bring super heavies on the board at all, they are the story, right? They become right. a big part of the story. We've got a player this uh, the, this game. He's playing an, a baronial court knight army. He's going to fun feature very heavily in that narrative because of the style of army he brought. But that doesn't mean you have to do big to be important. Oh, right. exactly. You know, you could be that one lone scout sergeant sniping on the top of the, the you know on the top of the tower who's doing all the who's doing the emperor's work and helping us all out. And I know that I I looked at the list and I got into it late. I was the guy that got that somebody canceled and. Yeah. I'm the guy that got that and emailed you guys and said, okay. And I looked at it and I knew that everybody was bringing uh, Deathwing or they were all bringing the, the Ravenwing. And I went, no, I'm going to.